Hi, my name is Kweko. I'm a pharmacist. In today's video, I'm going to share with you seven natural supplements that can help you manage your high blood pressure. My only ask is that discuss these with your doctor before you make any significant changes to your healthcare or medication regimen. Now, the first on my list is potassium. Potassium is a mineral found in many foods and plays a vital role in maintaining your heart's rhythm, balancing fluids in your body, and things of that sort. When it comes to lowering blood pressure, there is no denying the fact that potassium is a winner. It helps your body get rid of excess sodium, which can otherwise lead to water retention and high blood pressure. Now, anytime you have excess sodium, you are most likely retaining excess fluids. This increases the blood volume and the work or the pressure that is required for the heart to move all that increased blood volume around. By including potassium-rich foods in your diet, such as fruits, vegetables, and lean meats, you're giving your body a natural defense against high blood pressure. As a matter of fact, I have a separate video where I detail some of the best potassium-rich foods that you can consume, and I'm going to link it in the description below so you can check it out after you watch this video. Number two on my list is magnesium. Now, just like potassium, magnesium is another mineral that is crucial for proper body functioning. It plays a significant role in over 300 enzymatic reactions within the body, including metabolism of food, synthesis of fatty acids and proteins, and the transmission of nerve impulses. Magnesium is also important for regulating blood pressure because it helps dilate blood vessels, or in other words, it helps relax the blood vessels. Now, when blood vessels are relaxed, the blood is able to flow freely through them. There is reduced resistance to blood flow, consequently leading to a lowering of blood pressure. Now, in a review of 11 different studies, which involved 543 participants and lasted between one and six months, researchers observed that those who took magnesium in doses ranging between 360 and 450 milligrams daily had a reduction in both their systolic and diastolic blood pressure at the end of the study. Now, all these studies that I I mentioned I'm going to reference them in the, I'm going to link them in the description below so you can check it out if you want to read it a little bit further on these. Number three on my list is garlic. Now I'm sure you're probably familiar with some of the health benefits of garlic but did you know it's also a powerhouse for heart health? Garlic is packed with compounds that can help lower blood pressure and bolster heart health. It contains a substance called allicin, which has been found to reduce blood pressure by relaxing and dilating your blood vessels. Now, as explained earlier, when the blood vessels are dilated, the blood flows more freely, relieving the pressure on your arterial walls. Now, in addition, garlic may also help lower cholesterol, which is obviously a significant risk factor for heart disease. I must, however, state that the studies that show the reductions are usually modest at best. So garlic is not necessarily your first line of choice or your first medication of choice or supplement of choice to combat high cholesterol. Next on my list is omega-3 fatty acids. The main constituents of omega-3 fish oils, which is EPA and DHA, have anti-inflammatory properties, which can mitigate chronic inflammation, obviously a major risk or contributing factor to hypertension. Additionally, omega-3s stimulate production of nitric oxide. Now, if you know anything about nitric oxide, you know that it is a very powerful vasodilator, leading to vasodilation and improved blood vessel function. Now, this vasodilation results in enhanced blood flow and reduced arterial resistance and ultimately culminating in lowered blood pressure levels. In addition, omega-3s may also help reduce the blood viscosity or, or thickness of the blood, enhancing blood flow efficiency and potentially leading to lowered blood pressure readings as well. Now, as a bonus, omega-3s may also help lower triglyceride levels, indirectly contributing to blood pressure management and overall heart health. The American Heart Association recommends eating fatty fish like salmon or mackerel at least twice a week. Now, don't worry, if you are not a fish fan, you can also get your omega-3s from uh, flax seeds, from chia seeds, and from walnuts. Uh, alternatively, you can always take omega-3 supplements if that is the route you decide to follow. Next on my list is coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10 as we normally call it. Now, CoQ10 is an essential compound that's naturally produced by your body and needed for cell growth and maintenance. It's a powerful antioxidant and fights off harmful free radicals and prevents oxidative stress, both of which can potentially lead to high blood pressure and other cardiovascular disease. Research suggests that coenzyme Q10 can help lower blood pressure, but the results have been mixed with some studies pointing to real reduction in blood pressure while others are not so much. But I decided to include it in this list because of its 
other heart or cardiac protective functions due to its powerful antioxidant properties as well. Now, one thing about CoQ10 though is that despite the body's ability to produce coenzyme Q10 on its own, the levels can deplete as you age. That's why it's recommended to include CoQ10 rich foods in your diet. So foods like oily fish, organ meats, and whole grains are great sources. You can also consider taking the CoQ10 supplement if your dietary needs do not give you enough to bring you to the required levels. And as always, I also have another video where I detail some of the CoQ10 rich foods. I'll link that in the description as well. Next on my list is L-arginine. Now, L-arginine is an amino acid, one of the building blocks of protein in your body. It can be obtained from food sources such as meat, dairy, nuts, seeds, or from supplements. Now, your body converts L-arginine into nitric oxide. And as explained earlier, one of the main roles of nitric oxide is to relax and dilate blood vessels, allowing for easier blood flow and consequently reducing the pressure inside them. As a bonus, nitric oxide may also prevent blood clots, inflammation, and plaque buildup in the arteries further lowering your risk of heart disease and stroke. Now, several studies have investigated the effects of L-arginine supplementation on blood pressure in different populations. A meta-analysis of 11 randomized controlled trials involving 387 participants found that L-arginine supplementation at doses ranging from between 4 and 24 grams per day significantly reduced the systolic blood pressure, which is the top number, by almost 6 points, and the diastolic pressure, the bottom number, by almost 3 points compared to the placebo. Now, next on my list is beetroot. Beetroot is another supplement that works similarly to arginine in the sense that it relies on the vasodilatory properties of nitric oxide. Beets are very rich in nitrates, which are converted to nitric oxide once consumed and helps relax and dilate the blood vessels. Now, with respect to the use of uh, beet in the management of high blood pressure, I looked at one study and I found some interesting uh, data that I wanted to share with you. So on your screen now, you see this, um, this graphic where the, on, the, on the top left-hand side, you see that beetroot juice seem to improve blood pressure control throughout adult life. In other words, most adults will benefit from beetroot juice supplementation. However, as the population ages, or the, the result was a little variable in the elderly population. Now, when it comes to baseline blood pressure, what they noticed was that beetroot juice seemed to work better for people for whose baseline blood pressure was higher. Or in other words, the higher your, your starting blood pressure, the greater the effect of beetroot on, on lowering that elevated blood pressure. So high level overview of some supplements that you can consider adding to your normal regimen. But like I said, do well to make sure you double check with your doctor to make sure everything is okay first. And as always, thank you for staying through. Stay blessed. Catch you on the next video.